So this is the first exercise that is done um, with the Oxygen Advantage system. Um, and the title of the exercise is Breathe Light to Breathe Right. And it's a breathing exercise. And again, we're presenting this to our patients, our TMD patients, at the Atlanta TMD Institute. And the Institute's purpose is to educate dental and medical professionals in TMD. We give courses. We invite uh, them in for one-on-one -on -one, uh, teaching. To develop knowledge of temporal mandibular disorders, we have a books, well, several books uh, that I am writing in detail, extensive volumes, and to be sure that the knowledge is condensed and in one area and to successfully treat patients suffering with TMD, which is something I enjoy and love doing. But as I get older, I realize that I'm not going to be around forever, so I need to be absolutely sure all the information that works is given to practitioners who want to, to have the knowledge. Uh, and that includes dentists and physicians and or my or myofunctional therapists, uh, speech therapists, ENTs, general physicians, anybody who takes care of uh, patients. <clears throat> so again, uh, the name of this particular exercise is Breathe Light to Breathe Right. And it's Breathing Exercise 1. And I've entitled it Beginning Your Journey to Breathing, wow. So the breathe light to breathe right uh, breathing exercise is critical to everyone, obviously. But we're talking about TMD patients who tend to have problems breathing. They tend to breathe with their chest instead of their abdomen, right? They don't use their diaphragm as well as most people. And you have to become reacquainted with your body, retrain and relearn how to use your body. Breathing is usually an unconscious act that your like your brainstem takes care of. A brainstem is part of your central nervous system, but it's not part of your conscious nervous system. And we're taking your conscious nervous system to learn how to breathe and hopefully train your unconscious nervous system to breathe correctly. Isn't that interesting? Uh, so let's continue with this Breathe Light to Breathe Right exercise and spend some time with it uh, so that you can reacquaint your body to proper breathing. First of all, you're creating an awareness, a new awareness, a vision, uh, being able to see things that you weren't seeing previously. And you're reacquainting your brain and your consciousness with your body. You're, you're, it's, a, it's a mind body connection. So this is really kind of important stuff and we, we forget it and it, it integrates to some degree with yoga uh, in terms of uh, being able to breathe correctly while doing yoga. Uh, but yoga is just something that has focused historically on movement and breathing. And we're using these breathing techniques and awareness techniques to get you to see and learn and, and integrate. Again, you want to use all your senses and vision is an extremely important sense. And here's a big mirror with two young ladies in front of the mirror. You, however, will be sitting. So you want to get a big mirror uh, where you can see your upper part of your body and how it's moving and what it's doing. So sit in front of a mirror and you're going to watch your body. You're going to become reacquainted with your body. Introduce your brain to your body. Got it? And observe your breathing movements. Remember, we are learning how to breathe right now. That's what you want to focus. And where are those breathing movements? They're in the chest and they're in the abdomen, right? Your tummy comes out and in as your diaphragm comes up and down. 
we want a straight spine okay we want the rib cage to be oriented correctly so when the uh, all the ribs attach to the spine and when the spine is erect or straight up and down it's in its natural posture as we walk you're sitting but you want to sit straight you can allow your shoulders to relax a little bit but you want the spine to be straight this young lady is sitting her hands are slightly behind her head perhaps they should be right straight above her ears and you just want to sit up straight because that will open your rib cage it will straighten your spine so that you're you won't have any obstacles to breathing done ballroom dancing for many many years uh, and got pretty good at it and one of my instructors who i love dearly um used to say that mark you need to put a meat hook on the top of your head and pull it up straight meaning that as i dance i do not fall forward or slump forward but keep an erect beautiful straight posture what does that mean it means that a straight posture is beautiful when people look at you moving around with a straight posture they think you're beautiful when you're slumping forward it's not beautiful and typically uh, evolutionarily things that are good look good <laughs> i had a, a instructor say about uh, dentures and facial features if it looks good it's good so um, that that was a, a very powerful statement which i thought was crazy at the time but as i get older it just makes more and more sense but you want to imagine a piece of string gently holding up ho holding you up from the top of the back of your head you're being suspended and what this does is it's making a beautiful straight spine and as your spine if you're rolled forward you're going to come up your your rib cage is going to come up and free itself right into the correct posture and your tummy is going to open up so it can move around instead of being squished with a forward twisted posture So your lungs are in your rib cage. Isn't that interesting? So it is extremely interesting that your body is protecting those lungs. That's how important they are. It's protecting the heart, which is in there also. And uh, this rib cage moves. It's elastic and when it's normal. Now, some people over years and years and years of improper breathing, their rib cage is tight they may need massage work, uh, exercise work, and lots of breathing work to, in order for that to uh, be able to expand and contract. But when you're straightening up that head, right, at the same time as you're putting that hook on the head and pulling straight up, you should feel the space between your ribs gradually widening because when the spine is straight and proper, the rib cage will not be twisted inward or compressed and that's what happens with a lot of tmd patients they their, their shoulders come forward their head comes forward and they squeeze their rib cage in so their rib cage can't move and we want you to expand out your rib cage by straightening your spine learning how to do that and breathing correctly so that you your body will now feel how correct breathing is and hopefully adapt to it when we treat tmd patients um, we make a what we call a therapeutic bite a therapy bite and we our, my bite is the correct bite for their joints and their face and they have to practice that bite it just doesn't come naturally usually they have to practice learning to go into that bite and usually within six weeks they're posturing their jaw in my postured position with beautiful harmonious joints and beautiful face everything beautiful uh, and here we're learning how to teach the rib cage to stay straight and open so that you'll know geez louise i'm compressing my rib cage so 
to begin this exercise, we're not only going to look at our breathing and we're going to feel our breathing. Uh, these two people have both of the hands on each place, so that's not what we're doing. With this exercise, you place one hand on your chest, this is your rib cage, uh, and one hand just above your navel. So you're feeling the movements of your, your, uh, your stomach, right, your abdomen, and you're feeling the movements of your chest. Ideally, you would like to feel the movements of your abdomen primarily with very little movement of your chest. We let the chest move, expand and contract slightly, to, uh, uh, but not greatly that most of the movement is with your abdomen and your uh, what we call your diaphragm, which is the muscle on the bottom of the rib cage that, op that, that expands and contracts the lungs. So as you are sitting, watching, feeling, the hand that's over your abdomen, your belly, will gently move outward you know, as you inhale. And we'll look at this inhale diagram. The air is coming into the lungs. See the arrows? The black arrows going through the nose. We don't want to put it in the mouth. That's wrong. Uh, but through the nose only. We're only moving, breathing through the nose. It's going into the lungs. And if you look, there's a big giant arrow going down as the diaphragm contracts and the belly gets bigger. Got it? It's very important. This is inhalation. Rib, rib cage is expanding very, very slightly uh, because of the contraction of the, of the intercostal muscles. The thoracic cavity expands slightly, but the real movement that you're going to feel primarily is that abdomen. The other hand will feel the rib cage uh, expand. And you'll feel it, both of them. With your hands, you should see it also. Uh, I hate that diagram. It shouldn't, look, it shouldn't be anything going through your mouth. None, nothing, nada. And so the inhalation makes your tummy get bigger, right? Uh, and makes the rib cage get bigger. You can feel that. The rib cage is your upper hand. The tummy is the lower hand, right? And then gently, uh, as you exhale, let the breath out, not through the mouth. Again, this diagram sucks. Uh, the thoracic cage is smaller. The, uh, uh, the muscles inside the rib cage relax. And you'll notice that the arrow goes up because the diaphragm is going up and the tummy is getting smaller. All right, so the rib cage is getting smaller. You're feeling the uh, rib cage gets smaller and you're feeling the abdomen getting smaller on the exhalation. It's kind of like a balloon that's let out, right? You, you blow the balloon up, that's the inspiration, then you let it go, shh, comes out. And you're feeling this, you're looking at this, your brain is feeling it, you're, right? You're sensing it. It's new information that previously you weren't really aware of. Breathing was not something that you thought about or consciously thought about, and it became abnormal. So now we want to train you to become aware of what's happening in your body as you breathe in, inspiration, and you breathe out, expiration. So up to this point in the exercise, you're just... Uh, familiarizing yourself, introducing your breathing movements to your brain. And now we want to slow down your breathing. Okay, part of the therapy, the, the aim of the therapy is to reduce the amount of breaths you take per minute, right? Uh, and to reduce the volume of the breaths so that you can increase your carbon dioxide, right? Which will allow you to release oxygen better into the blood. It sounds crazy, but if you, Dr. Budenko found with astronaut, uh, cosmonauts that if you decrease the CO2 in the space capsules, 
then they can't breathe. Isn't that crazy? And we found this out with babies, premature babies, many years ago, 20, 30 years ago, when we first started putting them into incubators, they put pure oxygen and these kids got blind and all kind of problems happened with pure oxygen in the incubators. Um, uh, we need CO2. CO2 is the way that we release oxygen. Got it? So as we uh, do work in our tissues, we make waste, and the CO2 is part of the waste, along with that lactic acid and carbonic acid, just a bunch of stuff. And that waste comes out, and it uh, the CO2, everything, all that waste says, give me some oxygen, give me some oxygen. And so the CO2 goes in and kicks the oxygen out of the hemoglobin, Hemoglobin is the molecule that carries blood, right? And it's inside your red blood cells. So the CO2 kicks the oxygen uh, off and replaces it. It's, so the CO2 will sit on the seat in the hemoglobin and push the oxygen out of the seat so the oxygen goes into the tissue where it's needed. Got it? Good. So uh, right now what we're doing, it before you were sensing things, now, you want to put very slight pressure as you're breathing, so you are going to try to control the, the breaths now. You are actually taking control of the breaths using your two hands. This guy's got both of his hands on his chest. That's not what you're doing. You're putting one hand on your chest, one hand on your abdomen. And as you inspire, your tummy comes out, and you want to push on it very slightly. And as you inspire, your chest comes out and you want to push on it very slightly, not, not much. You're, and, and don't worry about whether you got the right pressure or not. Just you're, We're going to be doing this exercise over and over and over and over and over again for days and days and days. And you're, it's going to teach you to breathe lightly. It's going to breathe a smaller volume. It's going to increase your CO2 in your blood, which we want. You'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Previously, we thought CO2 was bad, but CO2 helps you oxygenate your tissues. All right, so as you breathe, exert gentle pressure with your hands against your abdomen and chest, right? And this should create a mild resistance to your breathing because we're trying to slow down your breathing, make it less uh, dramatic, right? Very slight. We're trying to get you to do like a Buddha breath, uh, very light inward. You can't hardly hear it. You can't hardly see it. It's just moving very slowly in and out of your body. So again, in this part of the exercise, you're breathing against your hands and you're concentrating, you're thinking, you're focusing your attention on making the size of each breath smaller. Meaning, right, on one hand, when the chest expands, we don't want this chest to expand as much. We don't want to hyperventilate. We want to ventilate slightly lower, right? The stomach, as you're breathing in, that gets out. We don't want it to go out super big. We want to take smaller breaths. So we're feeling and controlling, our mind is learning uh, to slow down that breathing so it takes longer, longer breaths, longer inhale, longer exhale, and shorter, smaller amounts, right? So breathe against your hands, concentrating on making the size of each breath in and out smaller. So it sounds crazy, but what you're trying to do is to take in less air to be able to teach your body so your your conscious mind, your awareness and your thinking says to your body, hey body, slow down, take less air in, please. Don't expand the chest as much. Don't expand the belly as much. Go slower, make it move less. So with each breath, take in less air than you'd like to, right? Because previously you were you learned to take in too much. You are hyper, too much, ventilating, breathing, hyperventilating, and that is the source of the illness that, that many people have. And so we're really trying to retrain you to 
change your body. And your, as your body adapts, it's going to take in smaller breaths and gentler breaths and very, very quiet breaths. So while you're doing this exercise, you are making the in-breath smaller and shorter, right? So your stomach is not coming out as much and your chest is not coming out as much. The inspiration is reduced in volume, but we want the time to be longer. So what you're doing is slowing down your breathing, right? You're slowing your breathing down, reducing it. We don't want to hyperventilate. We don't want to ventilate too often or breathe too often. So gently slow down and reduce your breathing movements. The movement to your stomach out is reduced. The movement to your chest up is reduced. The movement to your stomach in is reduced. The movement to your chest down is reduced. Gently slow down and reduce your breathing movements until you feel a tolerable, you can tolerate, it's no big deal, hunger for air. So we're pushing you to the limit of your air hunger. This is a very important thing. And as you do these exercises, that air hunger will reduce in terms of the ability to breathe. In other words, you'll be able to get your breaths in more efficiently with less air hunger as you tolerate that CO2 better as your body becomes more able to store oxygen. And so this is a really important exercise. So it's really important that you stay relaxed, okay? And because you're, bought, you're telling your body, no big deal, nothing to worry about. Slow down, calm down. The breathing is calming you. And, and just so again, breathe out with a relaxed exhalation. Just let the body do the breathe out. Don't force it. Don't use your muscles to contract, to push out the air. You shouldn't be using your muscles to push hard. Please just relax. So breathe out with a, with a relaxed exhalation and let your body do what it was designed to do without you helping it. So what you're doing is just relaxing and letting your body do its thing by itself without any help. Let the body thrive. Let the body do what it was designed to do. So allow the, the natural elasticity of your lungs and your diaphragm to play their role in each exhalation. Let the exhalation go out and relax as you're doing it. It's teaching your body to relax with the breathing. Nothing to worry about. Just let the body do its thing. Just be there with the body. Let it do its thing. So you're letting the body deflate. You're letting the body do its own thing naturally. So imagine a balloon, like you know, your lungs, slowly and gently deflating of its own accord. So you're just letting the lungs and the chest and the diaphragm go back to normal and slowly push out the air. You're not trying to force the air out quickly. It's doing it by itself. So when the in-breath becomes smaller and the out-breath exhalation is relaxed and slowly let out, you will see in the mirror your hands moving less. You will feel your hands moving less. The body will be more at peace. It will be stressing out and just doing its thing slowly and repetitively. So when in the when the breath in breath becomes smaller, the inhalation becomes smaller, and the out breath, the exhalation is relaxed and visible breathing movements will be reduced. You'll look at your body and the body will be appearing to move less. So I did not create this material. This, this exercise was written 
uh, by Patrick McEwen. And Patrick wrote the book, The Oxygen Advantage, which I encourage you to purchase. You can also go on Audible and get an actual audio of the book so that you can listen to it when you're working out or listen it to when you're relaxing. And the book is not a hard read. You can go through it. You just want to study it and think about what Patrick is teaching. But his materials came from Dr. Konstantin Butenko's research. So again, this material originates from Dr. Konstantin Butenko's research and from the Oxygen Advantage book written by Patrick McGuin, who learned directly from Dr. Butenko 